Welcome to another episode of Trial Site News. Today we're going to be talking about a New Zealand population study, which finds that Pfizer's mRNA vaccine is statistically linked to myocarditis and pericarditis. And, interestingly, the New Zealand government-sponsored study also reported nominal increases in acute kidney injury, but less than the rates associated with myocarditis and pericarditis. We'll discuss what happened here. And so, from Trial Site News, I am Adrian, and our episode is starting right now. So, this past December, a New Zealand man, just 26 years of age, died of myocarditis after having received his Pfizer COVID vaccination shot. According to a story from USA Today, the man died within two weeks of receiving his first dose, and a coroner determined that preliminary information has identified myocarditis as the probable cause of death. According to the USA Today article, the man had not sought medical advice or treatment for his symptoms. The Safety Monitoring Board said about the incident that, with the current available information, the board has considered that myocarditis was probably due to vaccination in this individual. But the board also made sure to say that the benefits of vaccination with the Pfizer vaccine for COVID-19 continue to greatly outweigh the risk of such rare side effects. Now, this case was one of three that the board has been reviewing since December 8. The second was the death of a 13-year-old child, which will require further information before determination on the role of the vaccine can be made, this according to the board. And the myocarditis implicated in the death of a man in his 60s was unlikely related to vaccination, again, according to the board's statement. This then brings us right along to the New Zealand study. Researchers from the New Zealand Ministry of Health, as well as University of Auckland, conducted a real-world observational study probing rates of adverse events of special interests associated with a primary dose of the Pfizer-BioNTech mRNA COVID-19 vaccine, otherwise known as BNT162b2, in the New Zealand population aged 5 years and up, vaccinated from February 19, 2021 to February 10, 2022. The New Zealand investigators tapped into electronic health records, and they were looking for risk within the period of day 0 to 21 days after the shot compared with expected rates based on background health data from 2014 to 2019. Deriving an incident rate ratio, or IRR, for each adverse event of special interest, the study team estimated with 95% confidence intervals, adjusting by age to calculate a risk difference and ultimately estimate the excess numbers of adverse events of special interests per 100,000 persons vaccinated. By February 10, 2022, over 4.2 million people had received a first dose, and 4.1 million had received their second doses of Pfizer's vaccine, or BNT162b2. These were administered to the eligible New Zealand population in the cohort covered by the study, meaning ages 5 and up. According to the findings, the authors stated that the incident rate ratio of myocarditis and pericarditis following the first dose was 2.6 people per 100,000 vaccinated, with a risk difference of 1.6 per 100,000 persons vaccinated and was 4.1, with a risk difference of 3.2 per 100,000 persons vaccinated following the second dose. They also noted that the highest incident rate ratio was 25.8 people per 100,000 in the 5 to 19 years age group following the second dose of the vaccine, with an estimated 5 additional myocarditis and pericarditis cases per 100,000 persons vaccinated. The study also mentions an increased incidence of acute kidney injury, or AKI, that was observed following the first and second dose of BNT162b2, these ranged from 1.6 per 100,000 people first dose to 1.7 per 100,000 after the second dose. Clearly, the risks of myocarditis and pericarditis in the young person's cohort ages 5 to 19 were markedly higher post the second dose of the vaccine, which corresponds with other real-world data, suggesting risk of this cardiovascular-related set of conditions associated with mRNA COVID-19 vaccines. This concern for healthy young people taking the vaccine isn't new. In fact, as we've already seen in places like Florida, here in the U.S., the Surgeon General there has gone on the record, recommending that healthy young people don't receive the vaccine. 
As reported by NBC News, they said that in a roundtable featuring Governor Ron DeSantis and the state Surgeon General, Dr. Joseph Lepedo, said that, quote, the Florida Department of Health is going to be the first state to officially recommend against the COVID-19 vaccines for healthy children. The reasons for that, according to DeSantis and Lepedo, have to do with lingering questions about the vaccine's potential health risks for young people. In rare cases, mRNA vaccines have been linked to myocarditis, an inflammation of the heart muscle among young men and teenage boys. And when Florida's Department of Health issued its guidance, they suggested that healthy children, quote, may not benefit from receiving the currently available COVID-19 vaccine, and focuses on youngsters with underlying conditions as, quote, the best candidates for the COVID-19 vaccine. Now back to the study out of New Zealand. The New Zealand Ministry of Health reports from the study that while rare, a statistically significant association between Pfizer's vaccine and myocarditis and pericarditis and acute kidney injury was observed. They acknowledge that this association has been confirmed internationally, but the Ministry of Health-funded investigators do recommend more research into the association with acute kidney injury. Interestingly, the study authors make a point to state that most of the adverse events of special interests identified were not associated with the Pfizer vaccine. Imagine that, not associated with the vaccine, which offered the authors reassurances around the safety of the vaccine. Now, this seems like something that we need a little more information on, don't you think? In any case, continuing around the world, the stance from most major medical institutions, regulatory bodies, and governments is that the benefits of getting vaccinated still far outweigh any potential risk. For example, here in the USA, the CDC, although acknowledging cases of myocarditis and pericarditis do occur, they say that they are rare and occur most often after the second dose. And they say that most patients who received care responded well to medicine and rest and felt better quickly. The CDC also said on the matter that, quote, the known risks of COVID-19 illness and its related possibly severe complications, such as long-term health problems, hospitalization, and even death, far outweigh the potential risks of having a rare adverse reaction to vaccination, including the possible risk of myocarditis. And let us not forget the WHO. According to the USA Today article, the World Health Organization has said, that the risk of myocarditis due to coronavirus infection is actually higher than the risk after vaccination. So there you have it. And they aren't alone. Most other regulatory bodies around the world say the same thing. Now, naturally, as news continues to surface on this subject, and as we get more information going forward, we will, of course, be reporting it to you here and at TrialSiteNews.com. And that, my friends, will bring our episode to a close once more. As always, thank you so much for joining me on the program today. For more content like this, be sure to check back to this channel daily, Monday through Friday. And for numerous written articles every day, seven days a week, check us out at TrialSiteNews.com. From TrialSite News, I am Adrian, and I will see you all next time. 